Let's uh, quickly bring you an update uh, from Lagos, Nigeria. The death toll at the collapsed building in Ebutemeta Axis of Lagos has indeed risen beyond nine. As of this morning, it's uh, mentioned to be uh, between 10 and 11. Well, the three-story building um, house, residential apartments and shops uh, collapsed at about 9.15 p.m. on Sunday. And government agencies say the building had earlier been marked and considered unfit. Well, our correspondent, Bernard Akire, who was there live yesterday uh, at the site of the collapsed building, found in this report. It is a feeling of deja vu for residents of Lagos as once again they are counting their losses and counting the dead. A three-story building that housed residential apartments and shops came crashing down at about 9.15 p.m. Sunday night. One of the survivors tells his story. I slept off faintly before I heard the voice. And I said, what is that? But what I saw and what I imagine that the building is collapsing, and I was naked. So when, the, when we reach ground, I now make sure that I don't put fear in my, in my mind, that what will be, will be. But people came to rescue me. As rescue workers dig through the rubble in search of possible survivors or the remains of those who have died, they tell us that the building was a disaster waiting to happen. So when we got there, so at that time, we were having close to 20 people uh, rescued. So at the end, so far, we have 23 people rescued alive and eight people uh, recovered dead. Out of the eight, three uh, females, five males were recovered dead. Operations are still ongoing. We don't know whether we can still see more or not. Since yesterday, We've been using different equipment, sophisticated equipment, DEXA equipment, light duty equipment, heavy duty equipment, and we are closing to the ground zero. At certain quadrants, we've got to the ground zero. And we are moving to all quadrants to ground zero. So I can say it loud and clear that our operation is swift, prompt, effective, and efficient. While the digging continued, there was a sudden agitation as another, already marked as unsafe, was discovered just around the corner. Looking old and rugged, parts of the building crumbled as we watched. The authorities sent an excavator to the building to pass what may be a final warning to the occupants. A seven-day ultimatum is all they have. Excavators and heavy equipment are now being moved out of this second location. Now the government agencies say that the aim of this was never to demolish this building while the occupants were still inside. But that if this move was not taken, the occupants will remain in this building that already has been marked for demolition and will not move an inch. But now we see that buildings like these clearly need to be taken care of, either demolished or reinforced. Back at the site of the collapsed building, shop owners could be seen salvaging what was left of their wares. Damaged generators, motorcycle parts, and other items were pulled out of the rubble, some completely destroyed. Then suddenly, some movement is noticed, hopes rise, perhaps another survivor. But sadly, the body of a little girl is pulled out of the rubble, bringing the death toll to nine. We, the government, we should go and make sure we check all the houses. This particular one, they marked it three times that they should evacuate for the, and our community itself. That's why we are going to make sure we talk to them. We are going to have stakeholders meeting. If you see what has happened to them now, it's very unfortunate. If you see and you don't talk, this type of thing will continue happening. As rescue workers dig relentlessly to ensure any possible survivor is rescued, Nigerians say the appropriate agencies need to properly check landlords and property developers so that cases like this will not be repeated. Bernard Akede, New Central Lagos. 
Hey, welcome back to Breakfast Central, and we hope that you've been following along. Just before we went on that quick break, we had the report of the Ebuti Meta building collapse, which is very heart-wrenching indeed. Thank you, Bernard Akede, for putting together that report. And, you know, it's heartbreaking, Joe, to see that these buildings had been marked on feet three times. Three times. And yet the people were still there. You know, there's so many issues that we can look at. We can look at the fact that there isn't integrity of these buildings mm -hmm. and the fact that we have a failed housing system because a lot of these people are staying there because they don't know where to go. Looking for a house in Lagos is it's an extreme problem. sport. It's a problem. So looking for a house is a problem. Um, government uh, enforcing laws that have actually uh, been um, uh, meted out. Take, for instance, the building was marked once. It was marked again. It was marked again. I mean, it ought to have been demolished from yes. way back or just as uh, Ben Akeli said, uh, possibly reinforced, but that did not take place. And there we have a tragedy. Indeed, our thoughts and prayers are with as many as have lost loved ones and property in the building. We'd like to please urge, if you're living in a building that has been marked for demolition, please make plans to evacuate the building as soon as possible for the safety of your life and the life of your loved ones. Mm -hmm.